That man just load her bags in the taxi and out she went. But she must have said something about where she was going. Oh, sir, she just said she was in a hurry and she had better hurry because that's the last train to Reno. Reno? Reno, my hat. By the beginning of the 20th century, Reno was well established as the divorce capital of the world. Hundreds from across the country flocked to the state that boasted shorter residency requirements and less stringent grounds for legal decree of divorce. Continued legislation called for ever more lenient restrictions on the existing laws. And in March 17th of 1931, the standing three-month requirement of residency fell to an unprecedented six-week wait. And in 1931, we know saw the amount of divorces nearly double from that of the preceding year. This same year, another industry, an industry which many had hoped to escape from, was beginning to find a strong foothold in the town of Quickie Endings. The success and popularity of this new trade would also hold her roots in the writings of lenient Nevada law. Across the country, the nuptial process held fairly uniform demands, including a waiting period and a blood test in order to screen the couples from the risk of contracting syphilis. Reno would be different, requiring neither of these demands and allowing couples fast and inexpensive means of entering matrimonial bond. Nevada never had a blood test, probably because there were so many areas of rural Nevada that didn't have a physician. So there was no way really to go and have a blood test. The legislature never got around to replicating the laws of California and Oregon and our surrounding states, which worked to our benefit in as much as probably a lot of people through the years came here and were married here just to avoid the blood test, the, 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 the nuisance of having to go through that. From 1931 to 1940, the city of Reno saw an unprecedented surge in the number of marriages performed, climbing from a modest 5,200 ceremonies at the beginning of the decade to a staggering 18,300 by the beginning of the 1940s. During this same decade, the number of divorce decrees granted would fall to a level below that of the year preceding the historic 1931 six-week residency legislation. The years following World War II would give another surge to the already booming industry as couples reunited after years of conflict would seek to legitimize the children they bore during their years of separation. By 1950, the industry was so strong in both divorce and marriage proceedings that Reno was now seen as the love em, leave em, and love someone else city. In May of 1950, the San Francisco Chronicle wrote, a good part of business comes from Californians who get a divorce in Reno one day and are honeymooning with the 1950 model at Tahoe the next. Diploma mill ministers, as they were known, flocked to the biggest little city in hopes of setting up shop, and Reno judges stood to make more money than those sitting on the U.S. Supreme Court, all as a result not from divorces, but from marriage fees. The San Francisco Chronicle writes a judge can get away from a standing start of Dearly Beloved and have you meshed, including a judicial kiss for the bride, in one and a half minutes flat. Reno swung. I mean, Reno really was uh, an outstanding, blossoming, busy, frantic weekend tourist destination city. We had one Fourth of July. I'll never forget it. It was about the first year this chapel was open, and we did 168 weddings in these two properties on a weekend. Weddings would continue to be a booming industry in Reno through the 60s and 70s reaching an all-time high of nearly 37,000 ceremonies performed in 1978. 23 total chapels were in healthy operation in Reno at this time, and the wedding industry was having a strong impact on the local economy of Reno. The years following 1978 would tell a different tale. Marriage licenses issued by Washoe County fell at a steady rate, and by the start of the 21st century, the numbers would be below those of the 1940s. This wane in the industry would only be felt in the northern part of the state, as Las Vegas continued to grow and develop. In July of 1984, the Las Vegas Review Journal ran a multi-page feature with a headline boasting, No End in Sight for the Wedding Business. Fourteen years later, the famous Love Wedding Chapel in South Lake Tahoe, which had been open since 1970, would close its doors. The chapel wedding industry is heavily reliant on the influx of tourism. And as Reno's tourism industry began to dwindle, the wedding chapels were among the first to feel the pinch. And in return, operation of the chapels has a profound return impact on the economy itself. 
the thing about a wedding is that a wedding isn't a $60 marriage license and say $100 or $150 at the chapel. The average wedding is probably worth about $2,000 to our tourist economy. So when we start losing weddings, we're cutting drastically into our tourist base. There's no clear answer as to why Reno began to lose her edge, though many note the loss of some old casino owners, such as Bill Hera, as a marker of when Reno's overall tourism-driven economy began to slip. The completion of Interstate 80, replacing Highway 40 as the main route through town, also drew business away from several of the local establishments. And finally, new legislation from other surrounding states also calling for an end to the required standard blood tests took further strain on the industry. Today, only four of the once 23 chapels remain standing in Reno. And while the idea of Reno weddings sometimes fall victim to the hijinks of Hollywood, it's an industry that held and continues to hold profound significance to the history and commerce of the Silver State. Because the population of the region has doubled since 1980, there will always be a local base to continue supporting the dwindling number of operating chapels. In a city whose notoriety originally sprung from a business of second chances, hope still remains for the ones that have made it as long as they have. We've had this building now since 1965. I think we'll probably stay here several more years. I have some hopes that there will be people elected to the commission and the city council that will have some interest or some motivation or some desire to do something special with Reno. Like marriage itself, the chapel industry has seen her share of still waters and stormy seas. Growing alongside the ashes and fallout of Reno's infamous divorce trade, the wedding chapels have thrived and brought notoriety to the biggest little city. They have fought the hard fight, basked in the glory of high times, and will continue to do so until death do they part.